Welcome back. In the next series of video tutorials, we're going to concentrate on rapid planning or wrap sessions. What in essence a wrap session is, is the integration of all the Agile PM plugin tools supported by your core foundational PM skills such as schedule and backlog room, etc. And what we have found in many, many examples is the wrap session dramatically decreases the time it takes to build a business case dramatically increases the quality of the business case, but probably more importantly, is done using a collaborative planning session involving your sponsor and your stakeholders. Now we've run hundreds of these over our career. And what we know is that the business case built from a wrap session is more defensible, it is more integrated, and it is much more open and transparent. In many cases, the business case is seen as simply a hurdle that the project manager and sponsor have to get over to actually get the funding for the project. This is a very poor attitude towards a business case because a business case is, in essence, the contract between a project manager and the sponsor, the project manager and the stakeholders, the critical stakeholders in particular, and the project manager and the team. It is a shared public document. It is in effect the job description of a project manager. In essence, the project manager's job is to deliver what's in the business case. We've seen case after case where once that business case hurdle is, is jumped over and the funding's there, the business case is in effect discarded, left gathering dust while the project proceeds and in many cases proceeds to be very different to what was in the original business case. I've seen cases where within a year, what was happening in the project bore almost no relationship at all to what was approved in the business case. Because what happens is the business case is approved, then through incremental small changes to scope, risk, etc., etc., recorded only in status updates to steering committees and sponsor, which of course are very hard to track because they happen incrementally. The, the business case and the project slowly start separating. If you lose the relationship and the link between what's in the business case and what your project's doing, you've lost control of your project. This is a really dramatic issue. I reviewed a project about a year ago, which was a $30 million project, and I could not establish any clarity between what the project was doing and the business case that had been approved literally two years ago and not changed. So a key, key focus of project managers is to work with the sponsor and the stakeholders to build the business case, but equally as important to keep that business case as a living document. Any change to the business case, any change to the project must be realigned. If something happens in a project that changes the business case, you must update that business case you know, actually renumber it if you need to, version 1.5, whatever that is, and then get that back to the sponsor for approval. This builds this trust between you and the sponsor. Business cases are what projects fundamentally are all about. The first step in building a really, really great business case happens in that initial sponsor brief session we talked about early on in this Agile PM plugin series. This is your first meeting with your sponsor. And rather than having it as an unstructured approach, what we've been arguing is you structure that meeting, meet with the sponsor, let the sponsor share background and vision, etc., and then gently move that conversation with the sponsor into five key points. First point, what is the sponsor's primary outcome? We've already covered that a lot in this series. What's their primary outcome? Generally, that'll be fairly easy to get hold of. Remember, the question is six to 12 months after the project's over, what's the single biggest difference you want to see? That'll get you to the outcome. Then you want to go through who are the critical stakeholders. Who are the people the sponsor can identify that he or she needs to continually support and agree with what's happening in the project, your criticals. If you've got courage, and I hope you have, I would then do the win-lose for all of those critical stakeholders, and then do the win-lose with the sponsor. I've done this so many times, it is amazing the impact that the win-lose analysis with the sponsor and what that can reveal. Next point, point four, is get your head around what are called cadences. What is the cadence for steering committee? What's the cadence for sponsor updates? 
What's the cadence for sponsors meeting with stakeholders with you, et cetera, et cetera. Get that agreed to. Then get, last but not least, what I call rules of engagement. How are you and the sponsor going to communicate? How are you going to escalate? What's the escalation protocols for a red situation in a project? How can the sponsor help you in terms of managing stakeholders, for example? These are sort of subtle, nuanced agreements with the sponsor that just clarify how you and the sponsor are going to work together. That's the primary basis of a sponsor brief. If you're going to go to the wrap process, it becomes a pre-wrap. And the additional things you need to do is identify with the sponsor who are the critical stakeholders the sponsor wants to have at that wrap session because it's a team-based session. And most importantly, get the sponsor to agree to attend the wrap and also to personally invite those critical stakeholders to the wrap. Having the sponsor invite people to help him or her plan their project is a very powerful symbol that the sponsor is starting to take ownership of the project. In the next couple of tutorials in this series, what we're going to look at is the wrap process and then we're going to look at variations on the wrap process, which you'll probably use a lot. Thank you.